Hey guys, this is Noah with Sparksight. We're a video production company that creates lots of cool content and we're here to make video easy. So the main thing we're gonna be focusing on today is if you were here for the last video with all these different computer parts, today we're actually gonna be breaking down the specific parts that I got for the build that we're gonna to put together. So we're gonna start with the CPU, the processor. In this case, it's a uh, Intel Core i9 9900K and uh, you can attempt and fail to open up this. Oh, there we go. Look at that, it worked. Just slide this nonsense off to the side, pull out this little box, so I can then open this box to pull out this little piece of plastic and show you the thing that cost $500. So the crazy thing about these processors is that even though this is already absurdly small for something that costs $500, the actual processor itself is a small little die in the middle of this. It's roughly about the size of your thumb. These things produce a lot of heat. So much electricity is running through the little processor that when it heats up, it heats up a lot. And so for that reason, you usually have to get some kind of cooler to go with it. So this is the Noctua NHD15S. It's a aftermarket cooler. What it does is it pulls all of the heat off of the processor and disperses it into the air. So the reason it's so big is down here at the bottom, you have the piece of metal that sits right up against the processor. The heat's drawn up from the processor into there, travels up through these pipes, and then fills these aluminum um, sort of fins here. And the more surface area you have, the easier it is for the heat to radiate out into the air. Then you have a fan like this, which blows all of it through. And the larger fan you have, the slower it has to turn to move the same amount of air, which means you end up with a quieter computer and one that usually is cooler as well. The next and arguably one of the most important things uh, when putting together a computer is the motherboard. It is the thing which connects all of the other components in your computer. And so usually they come in these fancy little anti-static bags here. Usually further down in the box, you're gonna find a lot of other uh, little items, SATA cables to connect your hard drives, uh, a, a wireless antenna for your Wi-Fi. Um, but the main star of the show is the motherboard itself. So usually when you get it, you're gonna wanna carefully remove it from the bag. Uh, definitely be careful to not like be covered with static electricity or anything when you're messing around with computer components. We're building on a nice wooden table here, which means you usually aren't gonna run into any problems, but a good practice is to set your motherboard on top of the motherboard case, the, the little cardboard thing that it came in. That'll ensure that you don't mess anything up here. Some people actually are mistaken and they recommend building your computer on top of this anti-static bag because it's an anti-static bag. That's like the whole purpose of it. But definitely don't do that because the way that these work is they actually conduct electricity around the edges of the bag, which means it's anti-static for the things inside of it, not anti-static for the things on top of it. So it won't actually do that. It don't just keep this if you need later, but don't actually use it to build on top of it. On the motherboard, there's a couple of different things to point out. This here is the CPU socket. This is where our little friend, the Intel CPU, gets to slot into. And I'll go over actually doing that in the, in the build video. You have storage, graphics cards, CPU, RAM, um, all the different front panel connector stuff. And then on the back here, this will stick out the back of the computer and that's where you're gonna find all of your back panel USB stuff, audio stuff, internet stuff. So this is probably the most daunting and confusing looking thing, but at the end of the day, like you understand how everything plugs into this and you basically figured it out. Like this is, everything plugs into this, plug it into the wall and you've got a computer. So uh, if you're building a computer for gaming, this is the one that everyone drools over. This is the graphics card. It's also in one of them fancy anti-static bags with a similar amount of uh, not that fancy tape. So yes, this is an MSI RTX 2070. The actual GPU itself is located roughly right about there in the middle of the card. Actually, I think it's about right here on this one. Uh, and it's got its own heat sink pulling the heat away and all that fancy stuff. But you don't have to worry about installing that yourself. It all comes together in one package. So like I mentioned before, the graphics card would slot in right here into one of the PCI Express uh, slots. On this motherboard, these aren't all the same. This one is technically a slightly slower bandwidth than this one is, but in terms of graphics card performance, that won't really make a difference. So generally speaking, you're gonna wanna try and install it in the one closest to the processor, because that's gonna be the one that'll have the highest performance. For your graphics card, that's usually what you want. So our next component is the RAM. So these four sticks of uh, 16 gigabytes RAM each, which totals to 64, um, are from Corsair. It's their Vengeance line of RAM, but really, as long as you get RAM from a brand that has good reviews, 
and uh, it seems like other people like it. It really doesn't matter exactly which brand you get. There are different kinds of RAM. DDR4 is the current standard. Uh, you can't physically fit DDR3 or DDR2 RAM into a motherboard that only supports this type of RAM. So definitely keep track of that. The RAM will slot in right here and it actually can only go in one way. So you wanna make sure that it fits in correctly. And then here we have the hard drive. So we put in a traditional hard drive into this build because even though uh, it's slower than the solid state drives, you also get a lot more space per dollar than you would with a solid state drive. So in terms of archiving projects, keeping them backed up, having just a place to dump additional files if you're running out of space, having an extra hard drive is just, it's nice, it's helpful. So this is a Seagate two terabyte, um, I believe 7200 RPM hard drive. That's just how fast it spins. Generally, if you're gonna get a hard drive, even if it's uh, not gonna be as fast as a solid state drive, getting something with a higher RPM uh, speed is, is good. It means it's gonna go faster. The only real reason we got Seagate is because it was the one that was cheaper at the time that I was putting together the list. There are people that are gonna swear by different brands, but at the end of the day, all hard drives are unreliable uh, and they all suck. So it really doesn't matter what you pick. Genuinely, the thing that's most likely to fail in your computer first is your storage. And especially if it's a hard drive. So if something's wrong with your computer, the first thing you should check is this sucker right here. So these are the three different solid state drives that we got. Uh, these two are actually identical to each other. They're just different sizes. One is gonna be for the boot drive and the other one will be for a lot of our active projects. Whereas this one is gonna be used for the media cache. Like if you remember from the last video, that's what I was, I was mentioning before. So for these two, Samsung actually has other sort of more expensive variants of these, these solid state drives. Uh, their pro line is what they're called and they're usually more reliable and a little bit faster for our purposes upgrading to that wasn't strictly necessary if you're concerned about having a really reliable solid state drive that's going to last a really long time it's definitely a great option in my opinion the more important thing is just to have a really good backup solution so it doesn't really matter if any of these drives fail because no matter how much you pay and how much you hope and dream your drives will fail at some point so have a good backup solution no compromises there <laughs> this little guy here is one terabyte of storage and it really feels like I could just pop it into my mouth and chew on it. Uh, it's gonna go doo -doo -doo. underneath one of these little things here. It'll just pop in place right there. If you really want the latest, greatest and best, an NVMe drive is definitely the way to go. But for most applications, regular solid state drives are gonna be perfectly fine, perfectly awesome in their own way. Um, these are also pretty small uh, and because they don't have any moving parts, they are very lightweight and unlike so, uh, hard drives which are going to shake and vibrate and make a lot of noise on occasion these are going to be really quiet so it really does seem like in the not too distant future solid state storage is going to be mostly ubiquitous across pretty much all types of computing as of right now we're still kind of transitioning but man these things are cheaper than they have ever been before and then we have this guy over here which is our power supply uh, if you want a metaphor, the power supply is by a lot of people typically called the, the heart of the system. It's the thing that delivers electricity and power to everything else. Uh, on the back of the power supply is the place that the computer plugs into the wall. It's basically a giant brick, which is gonna go most likely, I believe, at the bottom of the computer. Um, this is, it has its own fan and heat sink and stuff like that. The awesome thing about this power supply is that it's modular, which means unlike a lot of power supplies where a lot of the cables are already connected and it's kind of annoying, you have to deal with plugging them uh, in while messing around with and moving a bunch of other cords around. In this system, uh, all of the power cables are separate. So you just take the ones you need, plug them in and then plug the other part into the actual component within the computer. Uh, this part is usually what's daunting for a lot of people. They go, man, that's a lot of cables. I don't know what to plug into what. Really, you can't m really make a mistake here. There are, it tells you, hey, this is PCIe. So plug this boy into here and then plug this end into the graphics card. As you can see, there is on the graphics card, a little place where uh, that can plug into. That is pretty much all of the internal components. The last thing I wanna talk about is the thing that everything is going inside of. The reason that I got this case for this particular build is because uh, it's a very high quality case. A lot of people recommended it. It's a bunch of different things. And uh, it's the one that's on Puget Systems website as what they use for a lot of their builds. And they're a really reputable brand. And I knew that all of the components were gonna fit. And one of the key things is that I knew from its measurements that it would be tall enough to hold this massive heat sink. 
Uh, that's something that is a very easy thing to forget. You buy a really fancy, expensive heat sink, and then you put it into your case, you try to close the side, and you can't close it. So all of the different manufacturers have little tools that you can use, little things you can search up. Is this compatible with this? Definitely an important thing to do um, to make sure that you don't accidentally buy a case that doesn't fit. But if you just look at different build guides and recommended parts, and if you buy all of these parts in particular, uh, then you're gonna be good to go. So don't worry too much about that. So yeah, that about does it. Uh, if you watched all of this and you're definitely interested in maybe putting together your own computer, maybe you've ordered the parts and you're interested to see how everything fits together in a more uh, detailed way, then you're definitely gonna wanna stick around for our next video when we actually build this thing. Once again, I'm Noah with Sparksite. Our goal is to make video easy. And if you enjoyed this, then definitely consider giving us a subscribe. Or if you have your own thoughts on different parts, then you can leave them in the comments below and all that fancy stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching.